Hello, my educator family. Let me welcome you to Strategy Sunday. I am Carla Boswell Lewis, CEO for Strategic Educational Consultancy Services, where my mission is to empower you, our educators. We have started the month of November, navigating November indeed. Here we are looking at the appraisal document, the guiding principles that govern the document, and how it is that as educators, as you think about the appraisal process, how will you put your portfolio together? We're now in the e-space, the internet of things. And so many persons would want to put together an e-portfolio. Or if you still want to do a physical portfolio, then that's fine. But here we are providing you with tips, providing you with um, examples of how it is that you can understand the guiding principles a little bit better and what are the evidences that you can put forward to demonstrate your excellence in the teaching and learning process. Last week, we had with us Miss Jodian Evans, who looked at guiding principle number one. This week with us, we have Bajorna Jones Mullins. She's a master teacher of geography at the Manchester High School, and she is sharing with us on guiding principle two. And simply put, guiding principle two has to do with the teacher knows how to teach the subject or subjects for which he or she is responsible. I want you to stay tuned and to take out your notebooks and also to press the like or the share button so you can also share with someone who needs to understand the process. Just give her your listening ear at this time as she comes to us. Good day educators. I am Brijana Jones Mullings and today I will be sharing with you some pieces of evidence that you can use for the guiding principle two on the appraisal document. The guiding principle two says, the teacher knows how to teach the subject which he or she is responsible. The teaching standard says the teacher knows and is able to apply theories of learning and incorporate such understanding in the practice of teaching. Now, this is where you're expected to show how you have applied the different theories of learning in the classroom. You can use physical evidence such as your lesson plan, which should show differentiation. Now, you can show differentiation on your lesson plan by the activities that you give, you can differ differentiate using the objectives, you can differentiate using the content, right? So whatever it is that you use, ensure that this is reflected in your lesson plan. You could also present an amended curriculum guide. How did you go through the original curriculum and make changes to it so that it can be applied to your classroom situation? You can also use assessment pieces, such as projects, models, or any other piece of work that you'd have given students that reflects these theories of learning. So whether it be constructivism or behaviorism or any other type of learning theory. The next teaching standard is, the teacher develops in learners critical thinking and ways to identify and solve their own problems. Now, you can use things like a case study. How have you looked at a particular student with a problem or a situation and how have you taken steps to remedy this situation? Ensure educators that this is documented. It could be a logbook, right? You can also use action research. Now, action research does not necessarily have to be in your subject area, and the action research doesn't have to be done individually. It can be done with several of your colleagues. And how is it that you would have put in some strategies to make a particular situation better? Okay, so it's important that you document this as well. You can also use teaching strategies as a piece of evidence. For example, project-based learning. Ensure that this tool is highlighted in your lesson plan. You can also present group work 
presentations, any projects or models that you gave your students to do. And also for those educators who teach fifth form, you can use your SBAs as a piece of evidence or at the sixth form level, your internal assessments. The next teaching standards requires you to engage in reflective teaching and classroom investigative action to evaluate the impact of your instructional choices, actions, and interactions on the achievements of the learners. How have you looked on your past lessons that you have taught? Is there anything that went bad? How can you improve on this in the future? All right, so this is how you show growth. So you can use the evaluation tool in your lesson plan. After each lesson, it is important as an educator, you reflect on the lesson itself, on the objectives. How did the, the students learn? And how did you as the teacher present the lesson? Is there anything that needs improvement? So this is shown in your evaluation tool. You can also use the action research again to show that you are documenting any challenges that students are having and the steps that you're taking to remedy these challenges. Same thing with the case study. You can use your mark books. Now, if you have noticed that you have students in your class who are performing below average, what steps now are you going to take to get those students to improve their grades, okay? So your mark book is very important as this can show progress. You can also use a log book, log any incidents that have occurred because this is a part of reflective teaching. You can also use students questionnaire. Personally, I have started journaling in my classrooms and I use this as a medium for students to reflect on their learning, what they have learned in the lesson. And they too can use this opportunity to tell me what is it that I need to improve in my lesson. The next teaching standard looks at using verbal and nonverbal communication techniques as a as well as a variety of instructional media and technology to ensure that learners receive the intended message. Now, we can communicate verbally, but we also can send messages to our students non-verbally. And we can do this by using social media. So WhatsApp messages, Instagram, Twitter, all these can be used to provide instructions to your students. You can also highlight this in the lesson plan. When you look at the material that you use, it's important that you highlight the techniques that you would have employed. ICT devices. So for example, your PowerPoint presentations, if you have a smart board or you're using a document camera, it could be something as simple as the radio or television. It doesn't matter what it is, these are all considered as technology. Learning platforms are also another piece of evidence. So if you're using Google Classroom, Edmodo, Schoology, or any other platform, it's important that you document these as well. You can also use your class visit sheets. What is it that your HOD or some other person would have observed in your classroom? They can also attest to what verbal and non-communication techniques you would have employed. Another teaching standard looks at how is it that we foster competence, self-confidence, and a desire for knowledge through a collaborative, supportive, and an interactive teaching and learning environment. In other words, how do we build self-confidence in our students? How do we let them be active learners? How do we take ourselves as educators and play a minor role and let learning be more student-centered? So we can do this through giving them group work assigning them work so they can present, make presentations, peer teaching. You can assign students in your class to teach a particular objective. It is said that students learn better actually from their peers. You could also employ mentorship. You could pair a stronger student with a less stronger student and have them mentor each other. You could also employ think, pair, share. So you have students building their self-confidence, especially those students who are considered shy. 
Another teaching standard looks at how is it that we interpret national goals into our classroom organization and management to inculcate values and attitudes for social, cultural, and economic development. Now, based on the curriculum that you're using, you can use things like an assessment rubric, right? When you give your students group work to do or an assignment, it's important that we give them a rubric so they know what we're marking for. You could use a diagnostic test, ensure that you find out what level the students are coming in at and then after a period of time, you test again to see if you have improved or they have improved. You can also use your lesson plans to show this as well. We have come to the end of guiding principle number two. Thank you for viewing, and I hope you will enhance your teaching portfolio with some of these tips. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Bajorna Jones-Mullins, for going in details. It is simple, but I'm sure that we understand quite clearly what is it that is expected of us when we demonstrate our excellence in guiding principle two. We do know that there are two uh, appraisal documents that are being utilized in the Jamaican education system. We have one for beginning teachers and we also have one for teachers who are already experienced. So in the beginning, uh, teacher appraisal document, you will realize that guiding principle two has only four aspects. While for the teacher who has already started the expert teacher, we call it um, this for this individual, they have a six within principle two. And one such has to do with integrating national goals to, um, you know, into your class organization. And this is where last week, Ms. Jodian Evans uh, shared with us that you need to be able to understand vision 2030 so that you can plan your lessons accordingly because a part of your mandate as a teacher is to inculcate values and attitudes for social cultural and economic development how do you do that with your students in the setting that you're in and that is also something that is noteworthy that we need to be doing as educators i thank you so much edu family for tuning in thank you so much for all of you who viewed last week and shared with others so that they could watch um, the video and learn from it please continue to like and share and subscribe to our channel if you have not yet done so remember that for the month of navigating november we are going to be looking at the six guiding principles and this will also spill over into December as well. So you want to stay tuned and you want to hit the notification button too so that when the video becomes available on the channel, you'll be able to listen in and to learn from it. And thank you so much, everyone. God bless you. And I wish for you a great and successful week. And I wish for you all the success that you need as you put together your portfolio to demonstrate your excellence. Goodbye. See you next week. Let me know how it is in the comment section. Thank you.